What's going on guys? The CTA Prime back here again. Today I am back with the B-Link GT King and in this video I want to test out some emulators. I want to see how well they perform on this little box. Now if you didn't catch my initial review I'll leave a link in the description but basically what we have here is an Amlogic S922X powered Android TV box, 4 gigabytes of DDR4, Android 9.0. The box is a bit expensive at $115 and hopefully the price does drop down on these because this chip is fairly new and I believe that's what's keeping the price so high. The Amlogic S922X really isn't cheap for manufacturers, but over time the price will come down. The first emulator I want to test here is ReDream. This is a Dreamcast emulator. As of making this video it is in beta but it should be released to the public within the next week or so. I will have the FPS listed in the top left hand corner and the name of the game will be on screen at any given time. First up we're going to go with Hydro Thunder, this is the Dreamcast version. Let's see how this thing performs. Next up we have Power Stone 2. So far so good with the Redream emulator on this little box. Now I know the FPS is going crazy up there, but I haven't really noticed any major slowdowns that will affect gaming performance. And finally, for the Dreamcast side of things, at least in this video, we have Gunbird 2. Performance is pretty great with this little box and Redream so far. Next up we have some PSP emulation Round using PPSSPP from the Google Play Store. It performs really well but I want to get this out of the way. Killzone, Midnight Club, and God of War Chains of Olympus just aren't going to run well on this system even with the lowest settings. The frame rate is really low even on 1x resolution. But there's still a ton of PSP games that are going to work fine on this box even at 3x resolution which I have it set here. Alright, so up next we have some N64 emulation using Mupin64 plus FZ. I did have to turn the resolution down in the settings here, so we'll go to display, and I've set it to 640 by 480. But, at this resolution, Conker's Bad Fur Day does run pretty well. GoldenEye 007 is just one of those problematic games. I've never really been able to get 30 FPS out of it on an ARM chip, but here we're getting a decent frame rate and it feels great.
Same thing with Perfect Dark, it's definitely playable on the B-Link GT King. I was expecting this chip to really struggle with Sega Saturn emulation, but to my surprise it actually works really good using Yaba San Shiro. Now, this emulator isn't the most accurate Saturn emulator, but it will get you by until you can get a more powerful device. Hey. In my experience, Virtua Fighter 2 is one of the harder games to emulate for Sega Saturn, and as you can see here, we're at 60 FPS, we do have a little bit of skip going on, but it's perfectly playable like this. Moving over to some Naomi and a Thomas Wave emulation using RetroArch and the Raycast Core. Seems to run pretty well with the 2D games and a Thomas Wave and Naomi, but when we move over to the 3D stuff, it does struggle a little bit. There's still tons of great 2D games for Naomi though. This is Demolished Fist. We should be at 60 FPS, but we're sitting around 54, and I have seen it go as low as 50 FPS. Next up, we have some Nintendo DS emulation using the Drastic Emulator. This is available on the Google Play Store, but it is a paid app, and it's totally worth it. This is the best DS emulator you're ever going to come across. We're going to go with uh, Super Mario 64 for the DS. Got the FPS listed in the top left-hand corner, running at full speed. I've tested this emulator on a lot of different devices and it performs well on most of them, so you're not going to have any trouble playing Nintendo DS games on the B-Link GT King. And finally, at least for this video, I figured I'd go ahead and throw this in because I know I have some people asking. This is PlayStation 1 emulation, Bloody Roar 2. I've tested this in RetroArch using PCSX ReArm and EPSXE, both of which run equally as well. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. It's actually a decent little box for emulation, but I still think it's overpriced. These are going for $115 to $130, depending on where you buy them. And if you just put out a little bit more money, you can get a much better Android box that's going to outperform this in 4K video playback, connectivity, and emulation. This Android box does share the same specs as the Odroid N2, but with this we do get internal storage and we also get Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in. If you buy an N2 for a bit cheaper, you're going to have to add an SD card or an eMMC module, plus Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. It's still pretty early for the Amlogic S922X CPU that's in this box and the Odroid N2. Over time, performance will get better, but don't expect it to double performance just from some software optimizations, 64-bit operating system and Vulkan support. It'll definitely get better over time, but it'll never match the Nvidia Shield Android TV's performance. If you're interested in learning more about this little Android box, I will leave links in the description. Plus, I have my full review video. I tested out Android with some 4K video playback, native Android gaming, and ran a bunch of benchmarks on it, so definitely go check that video out. It'd be really cool if you could hit that like button, maybe subscribe to the channel, and if there's anything else you want to see running on the B-Link GT King, let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.